AI has been a cliche to apply to in medicine. So in this work, in this natural machine intelligence work, actually we try to cover the whole spectrum of the patient, not just like point care. So we want to predict the progression of the disease, not just diagnostic uh, tasks, for example, just diagnose whether the patient have pneumonia or COVID. But this time we want to focus on the progression of the serious arthritis. A pretty much normal disease affecting lots of aged patients. So they can't barely walk because of this disease or barely uh, working in their, in their own jobs. So in this work, we're focusing on this. It's very special because um, probably I also heard about nowadays a very hot this mid journey, those are generative AI. So in this work, we're applying those uh, cool generative AI technologies into the healthcare system. So we're introducing these things to really visually synthesizing the future look of these uh, patients' knee x-rays. So then we try to do our predictions based on those visual appearance, so those visual features. So I think that's really make us different from the current uh, normal AI applications in medicine. At the current stage, even those uh, long-standing questions in medicine is for those arthritis stratus or even Alzheimer's disease, people know those are uh, those kind of uh, longitudinal evolution of those diseases. We know the, we probably know the nature, but we actually don't know when the disease starts to appear, so the onset of the disease. So with this uh, framework, we can predict even eight years before the onset of the disease, then we can introduce uh, early intervention, early treatment, to better management of this patient's health. I think that's the very beneficial part of this work. Maybe one regret is um, it's a limitation of the current um, technology because why I choose this, uh, this Arthritis Stratus as a demonstration case or showcase is because it's a 2D uh, chest x-ray. So the current uh, technology limits me or limits us to expand it into volumetric data. For cancer uh, development, so this cancer growth or even Alzheimer's disease, we always need to deal with uh, 3D volumetric data from MRI or computed tomography. So that's really uh, a limitation currently to expand this technology from 2D to 3D. There will be a follow-up. Actually, we are planning to do this follow-up uh, research right now because um, from a technical point of view, from a technology point of view, uh, this generative AI is uh, evolving very fast because uh, there are new models called diffusion-based models. Like I just mentioned before, this mid journey is based on diffusion-based models. And our work was on a previous version of those generative AIs called generative adversarial nets. So from the quality-wise, the performance-wise, uh, performance it will be better if we introduce those state-of-the-art models into the framework. And then we hope to also transfer this technique to other diseases, for example, this, uh, this tumor growth or even this uh, Alzheimer's disease, not just related to the knee arthritis. I think I don't really have a research funding because I was just a PhD student at the moment, uh, but I think Daniel Tuan might have a uh, star fund internally. It's, it's not a big one, but it's a, it's a very known one to everybody, I guess, within Winnie Clinic. Uh -huh.